Hi, I'm Nick O'Leary from the Node-RED project. Here with an overview of the new projects feature in Node-RED 0.18. Projects are a new way for managing your flows. Rather than having individual flow files, a project is a whole directory of content. It contains your flow files, a package.json file, and a readme file. And it's all wrapped up as a Git repository, so version control comes built in. This video is going to give you a quick overview of how to get started. As the projects feature is in preview mode for the 0.18 release, I first have to go into my settings file to enable it. So here I have my settings file in a text editor, and I go down to the bottom, and within the closing braces, I add an editor theme section. Within that, a project section, and finally, enabled, set that to true. So that will tell the Node-RED runtime to enable the project's feature. So now when I run Node-RED, it picks up that setting, and you can see here it logs a warning saying that there is no active project, because I haven't created one yet, but that it's continuing to run using the existing flow files it finds. So now I can load up the editor in my browser. And the first time I load up the editor with projects enabled, I'm presented with this dialog, which is inviting me to create my first project. And it's going to do that using my existing flow files as the content for the project. The first step is to configure my Git client. So whenever you commit changes with Git, it records the commit along with the username and email address of the person creating that commit. If your Git client is already configured, you can see those details here, and if you want, you can change them. Otherwise, you must provide a name and email address for Git to use to sign your commits. On the next screen, you need to give your project a name. I'm going to call mine my first project, and I can give it a description. Next, it's asked me what flow files I want to use. So it's already picked up the name of the flow and credentials file that node was already using, and it's going to copy those into my project to keep it running. And at this point, I can choose to rename those files if I want, but I'm going to leave them as they are. The final step is to set up the encryption of my credentials file. We really recommend you do encrypt your credentials file to make sure um, Things like your usernames and passwords are not visible to users, especially if you plan to put this project on a public Git repository. So to enable encryption, I just have to give it a custom key. Look away now. And that key is not stored with the project. So if I share this project with someone, I will also have to give them that key to allow them to decrypt the credentials. So I click Create, and Node-RED is now creating that project. So with that project created, let's see what new features of the Node-RED editor we have available to us. The first thing to spot is in the Info tab, the project is always listed at the top of the Information section, and that tells you what project you're currently running. Next to that is a button, and if you click that button, it opens up the Project Information dialog. So this is where I can edit lots of information about my project. So you can see the name and description I gave it. Those are stored in the project's package.json file. And below that, you can also see the content from its readme file. And if I click the Edit button, that then gives me a markdown editor where I can go in and edit this file to contain whatever I want. So it's a really good way to provide some high-level documentation about your project. Remember that. GitHub and GitLab and many other hosted Git services use readme.md to present the user with that first view of a Git repository. On the other tabs, I've got the dependencies section, and this lists the node modules that my project depends on. So currently, as this is a brand new project, I haven't got any dependencies listed in my package.json file. But the flows I actually have deployed depend on a node from the Node-RED node random package. So here, it's offering to add that package to my dependencies. So I click the button, and that's now updated my package.json file to include this node. 
So that's really useful for when I share projects with other users. It automatically knows what additional nodes are needed and can help the user get them installed if necessary. The third tab is the settings tab. So this contains various other things to do with my project. I can change the project flow files if I want. I can change my encryption settings. And then there are the options around the version control, around Git branches and also Git remotes. So if I wanted to add a new Git remote, I could add it here. The other new feature in the Node-RED editor is the history tab. So the history tab shows me the um, version control state of my project. So already you can see in the local changes section, this is showing what files have changed in my local project. You can see package.json is listed as I edited the project dependencies just now. If I click on the file name, it opens up a diff view so I can see exactly what has changed. You can see the dependencies with Node-RED Node Random has been added. So if I carry on using Node-RED and move my nodes around and hit deploy, you can see the local files view updates. My flow file has now changed. And again, if I click on that, I can see what changes have happened within that file. As this is my flow file, the Node-RED editor offers me the show flow diff button. And if I click on that, it then shows me the uh, view we added in a couple releases ago to help compare flows to see what has changed within the structure of a Node-RED flow. Much easier than trying to diff the raw JSON sometimes. So these two files, demo.json and package.json, have local changes. So the next thing we perhaps want to do is to commit those changes as a uh, recorded version of our project. So whenever I hover on one of those files, I can see the plus button. And if I click that against both of those files, they move down to this lower section, changes to commit. So these files have now been staged, ready to be packaged up into a single commit. With those both in the staging area, I can hit the commit button. And that opens up a text input where I can put a message, my first set of changes and I hit the commit button. And that has created a commit in the Git repository. And now there are no changes to the local files to show. At this point, I can switch to the other section of the history tab, the commit history. This shows the history of all the commits in my repository. And you can see there are currently two commits. There's the one I just did, the my first set of changes commit, and also the commit that Node-RED automatically created when we created the project. And as before, I can click on any of those, and it shows me a diff of everything that changed. In this view, we've also got the branch button. So within Git, you can have multiple branches of work. And by clicking that, I could be able to browse the branches that are defined in my local repository and switch between them. And if I wanted to create one, I could just type in its name there and click the button. So that's an overview of the basic workflow with projects when you're working just locally. The next step is to look how you can start working with remote repositories to collaborate more easily with others. To begin with, I'm going to show you how you can clone an existing project. I've already created a test Node-RED project on GitHub, which has all my project files in and a few commits. And what I'm going to do is show you how I can clone that project straight into my workspace. In order to clone that project from GitHub, I need to set up the SSH keys between my local machine and GitHub to allow me to do that. So I open up the main Node-RED settings dialog and you'll see there is a new tab called git config. On that tab are all the configuration details about my git setup. So the username and email address we configured in the first set of screens, I could change here if I wanted. And there's also a section here of SSH keys. So Node-RED automatically indexes your public keys in your users.ssh directory, and you can see the ones I have here. From this UI, I can also generate a new key just for Node-RED. So I click the Add Key button, and I give it a name, and I can give it a passphrase, and then I hit Generate Key. And I can copy that public key to my clipboard and then go to my GitHub user settings and add that as an authorized key to access GitHub. 
So with the keys set up, I can now clone that project. So from the main menu, I do Projects, New. And this is the main projects dialog. You can see there's an Open Project section, Create Project, or Clone Repository. The Create Project tab gives me the same options as I had in the first set of screens, but all in the one view. But in this instance, we want to do a clone, so I go to the Clone Repository tab, and I paste in the clone URL from GitHub. And here I can then pick one of those SSH keys to use. You will see the project name is automatically taken from the Git repository URL, but I can change that if I want to. So I then hit Clone Project. So Node-RED is now cloning that project down, and you can see it's now loaded those flows into my editor. And the runtime is now running these flows. If I go back to the Info tab, you can see the project name has changed to the one I've just created. If I go to the History tab and go to Commit History, you can see the history of commits for this project. And just as before, I can come in, make some changes, whatever it might be, hit Deploy. And again, my flow file, this time flow.json, has been updated. So I go through the steps of I add it to the staging area to commit. I hit the Commit button and give it a message. And now when I go to Commit History, you can see there is a new button in the header, this one with the two arrows. That shows you the number of commits the local repository is both ahead or behind the remote. If I click that, and it gives me the push button I can use to push those changes to the remote. So if I switch back to my GitHub repository and go to the Commits tab, you can see another set of changes committed just a minute ago has been pushed to GitHub. So that was a quick introduction to the projects feature in Node-RED 0.18. We think you'll really like it. But do let us know on the main list or Slack. And if you like this video, don't forget to subscribe for future updates.